Hashtag twisted. Hashtag garden That cover. is a good deal, Ellie. I can't believe that. You guys are live any second, by the way. I think I forgot to tell you. You're yeah. live any second? Yeah, you guys are live. That was too cool, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, hey, Dave. Chip off the old block, aren't Dave. you? Dave. No, that's just what happens when you start with those. Can you check the yeah. camera controls and make sure that uh, oh, the switch is checked did. on? I unchecked it the other day. That tree looks so... It's just we're live! Yeah. Oh, we are live? Your yeah, mic is oh. waving the Dave and Nance looking kind of odd. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting Tony. close enough I can hit you now, Michael. <sighs> oh, Tanya, Tanya, uh, Tanya and Tanya oh, and wait, Denise I'm and sure. April and Kay, okay, Tammy, Susan, and Angela, phone. Karen. Hi, Valerie, everybody. Becky, Aunt Fruit, Carol Harden Taylor, yeah, JD, Darling Sherry. Yeah, Thank you. Hello, Thank everyone. You. Oh, boy, am I ready for this one, Bandana Grandma? <laughs> I was going to say no, hi, Zuzi. <laughs> <laughs> hi from Australia. Decluttering after Christmas is a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Okay, guys, so Ellie has to leave, but we had to show her wonderful bike she just got. Like, 20 minutes ago. So mom and I went to the thrift store yesterday and mom bombed out, but I did good. And came home and like at 10 o'clock last night, Ellie was like, you guys haven't heard of anybody who wants ice skates for sale? And I was like, oh, yes, I forgot to tell you. The thrift store had some. So, look what I got. They had like, they look brand new. They look <laughs> absolutely brand new. And then there's a shiny tag on this side that says ten dollars. Ten dollars. I don't even know if these they, they don't really look like they've been worn. They don't look like yeah, they've been, been worn. The they shiniest pair of the whole bunch, and it just happened to be mine. Her Nine. size. Ten bucks. Like these will pay for themselves within like three trips to the ice cream. There you go. Yeah, that's true. Well, I forgot. Not renting them. Right Maybe there. five. I, I it know. is day. No, skate rentals were three dollars, three or five dollars. So, yeah, I can't well, it depends on which rink you're going to, I guess. Yeah. So I just had this sudden inspiration last week to try ice skating, but not just like where you go around a circle, but like legit. <laughs> kind of okay, ice skating, you know. I'm so like, glad we're up on our medical insurance. <laughs> that's why the airport rink wasn't big enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as your toe heels. <laughs> Yay. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> so, well, it's a good deal. Frugality. Yes. They were meant for Chip you, off Ellie. The old block, huh, Ellie. Yeah, they were just sitting right on top. And they were like <laughs> shining and beautiful. And, like peace of mind. Yes. It's a shining ice skate on a hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't okay. take much to make Ellie happy, does it? Yay. <laughs> All right, guys, so today we are talking about how to declutter. Now, do not declutter your Dining on a Dime cookbook. <laughs> oh, yes? What did you pull? Well, Nothing. You put, put them down. Mom and I are the authors of Dining on a Dime. Got to put a little plug in here so we can make money while we're decluttering. Uh, <laughs> and then also our How to Organize and Clean series is half price this week. Well, I don't know how long. Maybe we'll keep it for a couple of weeks. But it's half price right now. And we're doing it while mom is talking about getting organized and how to declutter and get all that good stuff going. Because you gotta get it together, people. Yeah. Oh, Did I do good? Talking. Look! <laughs> look who's talking! <laughs> I spent three I hours cleaning this morning! <laughs> Well, though, See, now, when we hustle her, you guys know she dishes it out more than we do. I do, don't I? Uh, you want me to okay. start? No. You want me to take over? That was my bedroom, the picture you guys saw. That's my bedroom. What? Yeah. Leftover from Christmas. So I was going to work on that today, but I ended up on a business phone call for about two hours, so I didn't get it Although done. Although, to give you credit, that's just one little section where we were wrapping presents. Yes. The rest of the bedroom is... Yes. Better. I just got to go put up all our Christmas wrapping stuff. That's mm -hmm. basically yeah. what I got to do. So. And that's why we're doing this. I mean, the day after Christmas, two days after Christmas, you're looking there, and 
you know, I can get so discouraged because my Christmas decorations are gathering dust and they're all looking bedraggled and you've got wrapping paper everywhere and a big mess that you had before Christmas because you didn't have time to do it. And so I thought this would be a perfect time yep. to do it. Do you want... Preach, Daniel. Huh, preach, preach it. Preach it. <laughs> That's just because you remembered Mike was throwing away everything last year. I know. I, I asked Tara. I said, okay. And has what? that been a year? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Wow. yeah. It was, we were watching the New Year's Eve stuff while oh, I was yeah. just that pitching. Oh, my goodness. That yeah. feels yeah. like it was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was a year ago. says, Tara, help. My son has stolen all the soap I bought. He's holding it for ransom now. <laughs> I guess he really loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad he loved it. Good. Actually, I'm going to be working on more in a little bit here, but i got to get caught up on Christmas stuff, so... Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. All right. So. And if you have questions, start popping the questions yeah. out because we'd be glad to answer questions if anybody's got questions. Yeah. So <laughs> ask so. questions because this Ooh. is content we've gone over before, but everybody always keeps asking, and so we're going over it again, and we're re-kind of yeah. saying things differently and that kind of thing. So. Uh, Brown Coat Home says, I saw that your Diana Dime book went very well at the fundraiser for Rose from Wholesome Roots. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see how much it went for. I don't know. Probably <clears throat> less than what it's going for at Amazon. <laughs> it's, it's like, like seven hundred dollars on Amazon, Amazon or something. It's ridiculous. Oh Ooh, a lot of people are saying that they made stuff from the book Ooh, over yeah. the holidays. Oh, we made mom's so, sweet muffins and basic bread dough. Both have been a hit, and oatmeal cookies. If you want to get our Diana on a Dime cookbook, go to Living on a Dime. Click on Store, and you will find all our books there. We actually have forty nine books. And ebooks, guys. This is our only print book, though. Everything else went to ebooks. Um, so yeah. But our our ebooks are just like dining Wait. for different subjects. Monica hmm. is on. Oh, hello, Monica. She's that's the lady who recently. Oh, she loves watching us. Yeah. And thank you. She's been email. She made me a sweater, and it's so pretty. Every time you email Tori, read it to us, lets us know it's fun. Tori's husband has a birthday today. Oh, oh no. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his uh, name. It's O-V-E. Oh, we did this last year. O-V-E. I remember last year we did the um, same thing. O-V-E? Okay, here we go. Um, we don't have the candle or anything. Oops. We, we can't remember. Hearts. We have our hearts. It's yeah. Uva. 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 Well, that's that's what they're suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> but last week they also suggested a ring knock differently, and so I was uh, calling her the wrong thing. How about we just say Torrid's husband? We could say Torrid's husband. <laughs> okay, oh, so our candle is on the other side of the room, so we'll just okay. Or never Michael's mind. Gonna Mike's go gonna get go get it. Go get it. <laughs> Changing plans. But, uh, We're adaptable. Nancy, save water. Water wants to know: Did BJ get off for his trip? Yes. <laughs> He got had a 24-hour 20, trip to Luxembourg, and he got there last Safe and sound. yesterday morning. Pretty easy. Okay. Wait, <gasps> should we gonna say Uva or Tourid's husband? I guess we can Uva. do Uva. If okay. I think that's what it is. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Uva. We gotta get it together. Oh, and today's my cousin's birthday too. Happy birthday, cousin! Happy birthday, Justin. Um, okay, so let's get on decluttering because we have all these packages. I can't use that. You're so sweet. Oh my goodness. So we gotta we do like that too. Like the other Christmas. So. Yes. So. Or famous or something. <laughs> okay, go for it, mother. Go. She always says that I have no idea what I'm supposed to do or start. Okay, so what? How okay. to declutter? Well, let me start out by giving you the definition. Is that okay? Yeah. Go for it. Well, there's a difference. We were watching some videos and things. People cleaning. How to clean in ten minutes. How to you know do this that. And I said there's a difference. Decluttering means getting rid of stuff that you aren't using, that you don't need, that are ta that's taking up space in your life and causing you stress. And just one moment, I hate to interrupt, and I know people don't get all over me for interrupting, but when we say get rid of it, we mean get it out of your house in one form or another. I don't care if you give, give it to it the away, neighbors, give it to the it goodwill, to or if you throw it in the trash. 
<gasps> but if you can't give it to the neighbors or Goodwill, throw it in the trash and get it out of your, your house. house. Grandma says she's taking her stuff, what we don't want, and she's going to set it out on tables and just say free. Yes. So you can do... Have there's, a free garage sale. Free I sale. don't care how you do it. Just but get rid of it. And if you're going to sell something that day, you need to take a picture of it and get it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist immediately. immediately. If you're taking it to charity, you carry it out to your car and put it in the yes. trunk. Yes, Dave. Tracy wants to know how do you do it when you're over, totally overwhelmed. Well, that's, that's what, what we're, we're going to try to... And we may not get, we, let me clarify too, we may not get it all covered mm -hmm. in this one, but we've got a lot of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you know, the, and on our website, we have tons of articles articles that we go step by step Michael by step. Michael put a link in there. What is our yeah. website? Oh. <laughs> Living on a Dime. Cluttering article. Uh, which one? Room by room. Okay. And we've got several decluttering, you know, how mm -hmm. to get organized in yeah. 10 easy, easy steps, stuff like that. Decluttering so, room by room is in the comments now. Decluttering, that's what decluttering is. Then uh, organizing is taking what you have left mm -hmm. and putting it someplace in an order, in a spot or a place where you can use it and you can use it the most efficiently to save you time and energy and cause less, less stress. Mm -hmm. That's organizing. Then tidy, yes, Dave? Bridget just placed an order for a cookbook. Oh, thank you, Bridget. Bridget? Then tidying, I love it because I think the English and maybe the Australians, I don't know, you guys will have to tell me, they tidy their rooms. Mm -hmm. And tidying, we clean our rooms here in America. Everything's cleaning. But I love the tidying because what you it's do... It's different. Yeah, it's Clean, different. Cleaning and tidying are, are not different. the same. Tidying, you go in and you fluff up the throw pillows, make sure they're on the couch, pick up the toys, and just the general little mm -hmm. clutter in the room. Cleaning is you get the vacuum out, you dust, you scrub the bathroom down. Mm -hmm. And so that's all the different types. We kind of mush them all together to either organizing or cleaning, but they really are different. And you need to start thinking of the different categories and figure, what do I really do? Do I need to organize? Do I need to declutter? You know, do I just need to just tidy things up or clean? Mm -hmm. And so that's, the, before we start, I wanted to give you that. Did you, you say that. what tidying was? Yes, tidying is picking up the throw pillows, the toys. Yeah, and straight cleaning. Just general is like cleaning dusting, is like dusting, vacuuming, mopping the, the toilets, floor. Mopping the yeah, floor. that okay. type of thing. Now, one thing too, we've watched a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, I've read tons of books, and I find there's um. For example, we watched a video today and she said, look how I clean my room in 10 minutes and she's flying around, you know, making the bed and picking stuff up. And she did do it in 10 minutes, but you got to be careful because she threw everything in about, what, four, four baskets. baskets or type thing. And she set them off the side and here her room was nice and clean. But what she didn't add on is she's got to figure out what to do with all that stuff she put in the four baskets. Yeah, to her credit, she did say that she's going to take five minutes to remove some furniture down to the garage. Yeah. But she still did not address that she has to spend probably a half an hour putting up all the stuff in the baskets. So the reality is some of this stuff might take you a little bit of time, but some of it will take you less time. Don't put it off because you think it's going to take too but long. But stop making excuses and get started. Just yeah. At least... It. Even though we don't consider what she called oh, yeah. cleaning the whole package done, but she at she least got, got up started. and did it. Well, yeah. I, one of my favorite stories, and I think I told it <clears throat> last year, and I wrote it on the website, is I was sitting there, it was like two days after Christmas, and I was looking at the Christmas decorations, and I had piles of gifts all around, and paper, and it was just a mess. Stuff had been tracked in on the floor. And I did not feel good, and I thought, you know, I don't feel good. I don't feel like doing it. It's only two days after Christmas. I can wait. I'm not going to do it. And the more I sat there looking at that mess, the more discouraged I got. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what am I doing here? I thought, I'll just clean up the mantle on the fireplace. So I stood up, walked over, got all the decorations off the mantle, dusted it, and put the original stuff, the candles, whatever I had, you know, normally on there. It looked so good. Well, then I glanced down the table with the TV was right there with some decorations. I thought, well, I'll just finish that up while I'm standing right here. I did that. And right next to it then was my big nativity scene 
with all of it. So I thought, well, I can pack that away. Within about 20 to 30 minutes, I had the whole living room with all the decorations gone and everything tidy. It took me 20 minutes. I had spent long, double that amount of time sitting there looking mm -hmm. at it, telling thinking myself I did not feel good and I couldn't do you it. You spend more time thinking about it than yeah. you actually doing it. And you don't know how good I felt when I got that mm -hmm. done. The minute your mind starts saying, well, I just can't do it because I just, and you, excuse do number one. something. The minute you hear that happening in your mind, mm -hmm. you if you can stand in an upright position, you stand up and do one thing. If you don't do anything but pick and one thing even up. if you can't stand in an upright position, if you have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia like we do, you have to go to the bathroom sometime. So when you stand up to go to the bathroom, you pick, pick up, up those something. five pieces of trash and take and put them in the nearest trash can mm -hmm. on your way to the bathroom. Yeah. And like for me, I have a trash can and in some rooms I have two trash cans right by the door in every single room. Yes. Every room. So let's say um, I'm in the kids' bathroom and... I see an item that is too big for the small trash can that's in the bathroom, like a bottle of shampoo. But I'm not headed to the kitchen. I will dump it in the office trash, and guess what? It's okay. It is okay to put a shampoo bottle in the office trash. <laughs> it really is. As you're walking and that's how along, I do it. pick up stuff. If, <clears throat> if I'm in the living room and I see like Jack's shirt or something is laying, and, or Dave, let's say Dave's shirt, and I'm walking out back towards the office. His room is right there. Mm -hmm. I just automatically reach down, grab that shirt. Now, it's not that I don't make Dave work and do things, but some things I just pick up automatically. But and I walk busy. in, you know, but if you're busy, and you, whatever direction you're going in, if you see something that's going to be able to go in that mm -hmm. direction, grab it and pick it. You'd be surprised how much you can get picked yeah. up. Yeah, and one thing moms... That wasn't on my list no. of what we're talking about. Mom's <laughs> mom had a neighbor whose house was always spotless. And she said, well, how do you do it? She said, I never leave a room without picking something up and taking it to where mm -hmm. the next room where it belongs. Yeah. I, if there's something, if in the, in the living room are some headbands and I'm going to the bathroom, I pick up the headbands and take them with me to the mm -hmm. bathroom. I, I never go in a room that I don't walk or leave that I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think I heard you say this, but Michelle, oops, if I can get Facebook to stop doing that. Okay, Michelle said when I clean, I clean the easiest rooms first. I can see the improvement and it makes the mm -hmm. tasks seem less yeah. overwhelming. I would, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that when I did that living room uh, that Christmas, you something happens in you. You get this motivation mm -hmm. going, and I ended up doing the kitchen too, getting mm -hmm. rid of all... I just couldn't almost stop myself. Even though I didn't feel good, it was I was like I was on a roll yep. and I kept going. So once you get up and get started, you'd be it looks so good you want to do more. Mm -hmm. You just want to do more. So mm -hmm. Just R said she needs help. It's hard to get rid of her mother's things. She ah, we're away. talking about that. It's so <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about getting rid of Dave said who was it? Jess R. Jess R was saying, How do I get rid of my mother's things? It's so emotional. We're gonna talk about that. Did you want to talk um, about it now? Because we can do it now. Okay, right? go for it. Me? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I well, have no emotions, so it's no problem for me to get rid of stuff. Oh, thanks. You get rid of all this stuff I've been saving for you. All these no. quilts I made. And you can see all my grandmother's and mother's stuff up there. Actually, she says that, but she probably, she does, but she uses them, you know. She uses them. Mm -hmm. So you can, yeah. that's one thing. If you're going to, if you have a way to use them, that's perfectly fine to keep them. <clears throat> and we were, Michael and I were talking about this before the uh, show. <clears throat> and, you know, he, he said he got rid of a lot of stuff that had negative emotions. That's the word I was looking a for. A lot of stuff that had negative emotions. If, yeah. if anything has negative emotions, if you can't remember anything about it, if you have a picture and you don't know the people in them and it was in your mom's stuff, just get rid of this stuff. Uh, if you can, designate how many boxes. Now, I'm not talking about big pieces of furniture because that falls into kind of a different category a little bit. But figure out, okay, can I store five boxes of my mom's stuff? Go through the stuff that really has meaning. For example, I know my grandma has dishes, but half the dishes I don't remember ever having seen. And they don't mean a whole lot to me because I never saw them. She never used them when I was around. But she did have a whole lot of dishes that I do remember, about five or six pieces. I actually use them in my kitchen every day. So those I keep. The other dishes, I'll either ask family members if they want them, 
or something like that, you know. Okay. Just because they owned it. If it doesn't mean something to you, you do not have to keep it. You don't it. have to keep it. There's, You're going to yeah. have five boxes of memory stuff. <clears throat> it's not your mom. Those boxes are not your mom. Mm -hmm. It's it's what you feel about your mom. And yes, you want to cling to everything that was theirs, but you've got to remember her love for you is not going to change if you get rid of a lot, a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, she'd probably feel bad. If you're keeping a lot of her stuff and you can't store it, it's causing you work and anguish and stress. It would make her feel worse to know that you're keeping that stuff. Well, and oh, I hope this is okay to say. In Michael's case, <laughs> keeping that stuff is not going to make his parents love him <clears throat> by him hanging on to it. His parents Are have... Are you analyzing me? <laughs> <laughs> his parents have basically disowned us. Wait till your mother-in-law gets in. <laughs> oh my God. And his his parents have never really truly loved him and sorry dear and he was like sorry. he was like i'm holding on to this stuff and i don't understand why well he's holding on to it hoping his parents, parents will love him will and love they him. won't well and i kept looking at I, I used to save every photograph i ever took and i had and then of course thankfully in the old days we couldn't take that many of them because we didn't have digital cameras <laughs> But I was looking through a lot of the pictures thinking, why am I saving this picture? It reminds me of bad things. Yeah. And there were, I mean, there were a few, I didn't get rid of everything, but I got rid of all the ones that, that created negative mm -hmm. thoughts. Because I thought, I felt like I'm just keeping this because I have to for some reason. Yeah. And I think a lot of family stuff is that things that relate, that you think are somehow related to family, you feel like you have to keep, even though... Those, the family members, in, well, in my case, I don't know, but it, in most cases, I would say the family members in question wouldn't think that you should have to keep them anyway. Yeah, and you'd be surprised how many children, great grandchildren, you know, they like some things, but not a lot. But another thing, too, is you can narrow it down. Like, I have this, had this huge fur coat, uh, a fake. It wasn't fur, it was like something, I don't know what it was, this, that my mom had for years. Well, it's starting to disintegrate. It's not going to last for very long, and it's big. It takes up a lot of room. That I can release and let go of, more so than maybe a piece of jewelry of hers that I have or a special oh, a water jug. My brother wants this ugly old plastic water jug that we used as kids for years. That has a lot of meaning to him. He needs to keep that. Where other things, you know, it doesn't matter. My set of dishes, I don't think Tara wants my china dishes, do you? Because I didn't use them. Those, you, she doesn't no even idea. remember what they are. See? <laughs> yeah, so about. why should I make her save four, four boxes of china? You might show them to me just to make sure. But. You know, but she, I don't think she even remembers. But I have my everyday dishes that we used, mm -hmm. you know, the brown ones with all the seams oh, on yeah. them. Those I like ones. those, yeah. She loves those. Yeah. So, I have those, by the so way. So that's how you can narrow it down. It's going to be hard, I'll be honest. It'll be really hard, but try one or two easy things, and if you keep working at it, each time it get didn't won't get easier and easier, Michael. Uh, on getting rid of this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, and a number of people have been commenting on this about feeling overwhelmed, and I forgot who it was that said it, but it's true. If you just look at the one little thing that you can do right now. Yeah, just do one. That's kind of bothering you. The more you do it, you suddenly feel like, oh, You have this to is, do this is small exciting. little steps. That's the way with even doing the Christmas stuff. I was just going to do the mantle top. It was just one little small mm -hmm. area. A small thing, I was going to start with that and quit. Mm -hmm. But you'd be surprised how if okay, you start. So, but it's almost kind of like paying off debt because you, you you declutter something small and you're like, oh, that wasn't so hard. And then you do something a little bigger and then a little bigger. And then suddenly you see, wow, well, I have this pile of stuff ready to go out yeah. to wherever it's going away from my house. Yeah. And, and it just gets more and more exciting. Last year, I think I ended up, we have a recycling can and a trash can, and I had the recycling can filled all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, once my got started, it was just some okay, releases. Okay, so let's talk about how do you start if you're overwhelmed, since everyone's wondering how to do that. Well, it's just like what I said. You find the worst spot that's driving you crazy. Mm -hmm. Just It can only be One like... One section of kitchen yeah, counter. A little or, tiny two-foot section. Your kitchen table. Well, and... and Medicine insurance from like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Get rid of bottles of pills that are, yeah, there are mm -hmm. stuff that you've been hoarding like that. But you start with the one little section and I just went out of my mind. Well, so no. the thing that's bothering you the most, so if you want to sit down and eat at oh, the I kitchen know. table, 
Go ahead. Well, so find that one spot. And another thing is envision what you want that spot to look like. For example, if it's the kitchen table <coughs> and it's mounted with bills and all kinds of stuff, look and think in your mind, what do you want that table to look like? Do you want a nice tablecloth on it or do you want it totally clear with maybe just a fresh bowl of fruit, a couple of pretty placemats? Envision what you want that to look like and that'll kind of inspire you a little bit more to get that cleaned off so that you can put that bowl of fruit with the placemats. And once you get that done, it'll look so good to you, you'll be mm -hmm. excited to move on to the next, maybe a section of the kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's your bed. Do you have stuff piled? A lot of people sleep with stuff piled on their bed. I say start with your bed and your kitchen table for the first two yeah, places. Yeah, I do too, personally. I never, ever, ever leave my bed unmade. There is something about walking mm -hmm. in the room at night Into to a fresh, a, bed. a fresh bed that's made up nice and neat. And I timed it because I used to dread making my bed. It takes me literally 30 seconds to pull up the sheet, the blanket, and the comforter and put the pillows on. 30 seconds. And she also had a friend that said, well, it takes me a good 20 minutes or something to make her bed. But she had mounds of throw pillows. Mm -hmm. She had throws and all this stuff. If that stuff is dragging you down yeah. and keeping you from getting it done quickly so that you're not making your bed, Think about it, you got these pretty throw pillows, but they're all on the floor piled under throws and blankets. Mm -hmm. What use is that? Yeah. Get rid of those things and simplify it mm -hmm. and maybe just have one or two throw pillows on and call it good and you can get that bed made in instantly. Did yes. you? Oh, I see a number of comments that I have answers to. I don't know if you guys want to. Oh no. <laughs> well, Sandra says I'm always saving stuff for a rainy day. And I'm thinking, you know, if civilization collapses and you know it's about to happen and you want to save everything in the world for a rainy day. Oh, oh I thought you were not, I mean, some people only save a few things for a rainy day, but most people we've known like that save 14 vacant lots full of stuff. <clears throat> and um, my thinking on my that... Fam, my dad's side of the family was hoarders, so yeah. I totally get all this. But my thinking on that is... <clears throat> I, I, when I was trying to persuade myself to get rid of stuff, I thought I could sell some of it on eBay or wherever else you sell it now. Or, and I could give away, and if it doesn't sell, it's really not worth what I thought it was worth. And mm -hmm. even if, and if it's nice, I'll give it to a thrift store. And if it's just trash and I'll just get rid of it. But I was thinking at the time, you know, with, if, if I happen to get rid of something and I really find later that I needed it for a rainy day, I could take, it would be less cost than the money I made getting rid of all that other stuff. Yep. And that was 25 years ago, and I have not, one of, I never didn't have to replace one of those things that I got rid of. Yep. All this time, and I was thinking, yay. Well, one thing too, if you really do have a, not, I don't want to call it a problem, but I tend to want to save things for a rainy day. But what I do is, I have a certain shelf that whatever this item is or that type like gardening stuff you know whatever that I will keep and I will fill that shelf up with the stuff I'm saving in case I need it once that's full someone's gotta go yeah that's it if you start making sure that you have a certain area that you mm -hmm. need for certain items organizing goes much better because <clears throat> once that gets full you can't keep it if you are saving 35 sour cream containers or yogurt containers exactly. and you never get through the pile if you never get through the pile you are saving too many yeah yeah you should tacos. every yeah. with what taco sauce, yeah. taco sauce. <laughs> well <laughs> when yeah we're like that with taco, taco sauce, sauce but orders. you should at least get through the pile every now and then and use it all up before you start saving more yes dave um melissa smith wants to know what do you do when you live with slobs Hello. Okay. <laughs> what do you do when you live with slobs? When you live with slobs. Wait till they go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, the house is all clean. Well, I was going to ask you, but you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's going to be a lot of compromising. I, I guess it really depends. Okay, if it's your kids. That's a different story. If it's your kids or your husband, it's two different things. If it's your kids, you need to make your kids accountable for cleaning up after themselves. So like for me, I would, yeah, the I was teenagers gonna... do not get to leave the driveway unless it is picked up and cleaned up. Yes, you over there. My frying pan with 20 dishes. 
No, you're a teenager. <laughs> and um, so they're not allowed to leave until those are done. Um, now yeah. Well, with yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. The kids should not be ruling your lives. The kids are living under your roof, you know, and you're being, you're not, I, like why I was hesitating was I was going to cover that in a minute on that, that subject about how to get your kids to help and how to get your husband. And I didn't know, you know, okay. if you're wanting to well, wait. let's go back to there then, then we'll go back. We have other comments too. Yeah, I was going to cover that in, in a little bit more detail about how to get husbands and kids to do things help you, you know, to do stuff. Okay. And I didn't know if that fell in that category. That's sure. why I was kind of hesitating. That's but fine. So. Well, uh, Ramona said I keep things that are antiques and worth money and things that were handmade. So Yeah, but why are you, you keeping know them? So what? I'll tell you what Those I did. I did the, I, no, I did the same thing. <laughs> I kept a whole house full. I don't know. I have boxes. My dad used to collect them. We used to collect them and I thought this will this is worth something. And I'm going to eventually get the money out of them. So if I need money, you know, I've got the money. It's totally backfired on me. And I just found that out recently. I have got lots of antiques that I've tried auction houses. I have tried uh, mm -hmm. stores, auction, you know, malls, things like that. I can't get rid of them now. Mm -hmm. I missed my window of opportunity. And now I've got boxes and a house full of antiques that I think they're worth something. But now I'm stuck with them. So what I've gradually started doing is I'm pushing the problem off to somebody else. And I'm taking, I had a whole Mammy and Pappy collection. Huge, huge Mammy and Pappy collection. They're little black ladies and dudes. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Little, you know, yeah. they're really cute. They're, cute. Yeah, they're, they're really cute. cute. Yeah. And I love them. I just always loved them. I had a huge, and I finally last year broke down. I thought these are worth something. And they are, if you look. But I can't get them sold on Amazon. Or not Amazon. eBay. eBay. Yeah. I can't get these things to sell. So I finally took the whole kit and caboodle to a thrift, a charity, for them to try to figure out how to sell them. So I feel like at least I'm giving them to somebody that maybe could figure out what to do with them. Because I can't. So I'm not going to collect anything again. I know people that collect the Beanie Babies. Remember the Beanie Baby precious thing? Precious Moments. Oh, oh my, they're good. That. Yeah, Precious Moments. They have a huge collection of these things thinking they're going to make a lot of money. Fast forward 20, 30 years, you can't give them I away. I have family members that I am not exaggerating had probably 15 tubs of Beanie Babies and they are literally rotting. Mm -hmm. well, because they collected them and they're not worth anything. They're not well, worth anything. And things. Beanie Babies are the kinds of, a lot of things are called collectible, and they might even say collectible on the package. If it says collectible, it's never, ever going to be collectible. And if it's something that everyone had because it was the in thing back then, there's just too many of them. Yeah. I, I worked for PBS and we were doing Antiques Roadshow one time, and it was interesting that the majority of things people thought were valuable were not. Yeah. And a lot of people had, there's like a Last Supper, Jesus, uh, picture that's really cool from like the 1930s, mm -hmm. 20s and 30s, yeah. But and it looked really awesome. And this person gave me <clears> it, and they're like, "Yeah, it's probably worth about a buck at a thrift store." <laughs> and and she's like, "What?" And he said, "Well, the thing is, every American family had one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there are millions of them still out there. You you can't and really so even tell though they're really, what's going to be popular. So even though they're really nice, just there are a lot more of them than people want. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? What is really collectible is like they used to put depression glasses in oatmeal boxes to give them away free. So everybody just tossed them because they thought they were worth nothing because you got them free in mm -hmm. the oatmeal boxes. And now those are the collectible, or you know, they're. Mm -hmm. But even those aren't as much collectibles as the retro stuff, the 50s and you know 60s stuff. So you got to be really careful with those antiques and saving them, thinking you're gonna, you know, make money mm -hmm. off of them. So well, there are people saying both of you look. Somebody said you look fab, girl, and somebody oh. said you look really pretty today. Oh. So Ooh. just letting you know. Thank you. Hey, I was gonna say as a on the thing of value, when I got rid of a bunch of stuff, I kept a lot of it for years because I thought it had value. And I just went through this phase where I just started getting rid of things. And it's partly we were paying off debt. And I thought, all this stuff that they tell me has value, if I keep it because I saw my grandparents go all the way to their graves with all this mm -hmm. all these antiques that they said were valuable, and at the mm -hmm. time Nobody could get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And so I, 
at the time eBay had just come out and I, I thought, well, here's a market of people that want to buy stuff and they're looking specifically for things. And if I put it on there and nobody buys it, it must not have as much value as I thought. And I did that and I found out some things did have the value and I thought, yay, I have the money and I'm not going to die with all this stuff. <laughs> and um, other things didn't make, didn't get anything, like not even $5. And I think, okay, well, I'm just going to take that to the thrift store like you did. And my life has been so much more mm -hmm. relaxed since yeah. then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So we haven't even started on the book. Do we yet. have more questions before I get started though? Um, by the way, just a little plug here. Our how to organize and clean your home ebook series is on sale for 50% off right now. So Michael put the link in there for you guys. For which one? Uh, oh, the... <coughs> oh. Uh, the mm -hmm. cleaning yeah. or the organizing one, yes. And I don't know how to do this tactfully because this is really a plug. But these books are really good. I mean, we got I some hate good to, information. Yeah, we've got information that's totally different from a lot of cleaning and organizing books that you normally see. And it's like dining. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of funny stories in there. We <clears> did <throat> stuff like that. That And it comes from a totally different area. And I'll, should I go ahead and start mm -hmm. then? Yep. Because to give you an example, and I'm going to be giving you examples, just small little tidbit of a lot of things that are in here. And so... The what? Yeah, put it up. And so I'm going to give you examples of just a few things that we have in this. And we come at a different... I get. I guess what I'm going to say is, I get frustrated with so many cleaning books, so many YouTube on cleaning and organizing, because what they do is they assume everybody. They come up with one cleaning tip and think everybody can use the same cleaning ideas. Or they come up with the stupidest cleaning tips you ever. Like I saw this article: How to clean your house in two hours for company. It included doing a load of laundry. Why are you doing laundry before com company comes? Why do you that, have to get that you done? Don't you need don't to have do to do that. You don't laundry before company comes. You save that after Christmas. I mean, how ridiculous is that? And so. then I saw a thing where how to get the this um, label off a yeah. glass jar. And she said, okay, make a paste of baking soda. I know everybody loves baking soda and vinegar, but, you know, let's get kind of over it a little bit because she put this paste of baking soda on this label, just a pickle jar label. And she soaked that for I don't know how long. She soaked this. Then she said now she filled up vinegar in her sink, turned for the jar, jar for one jar, put the vinegar in or put the jar <coughs> in the sink and soaked overnight with the vinegar in there. Me, if I've got a pickle jar, I want the label off. I kind of scrape it with my fingernail, you know, to get that top layer. I just scraped it for a second, took the soppy wash rag, slapped it on there, finished washing my dishes, you know, with another wash rag. By the time I had that done, the peel just label just pulled right off. Sometimes they make them so complicated. But what I really get frustrated is they say, okay, here is, there's one woman on there that everybody loves very very much and she wakes up each morning and she said this is your list of what you have to do today and everybody does exactly the 10 things or whatever's on okay, this we'll list. we'll just say who it is. We can't stand no, Fly Lady. No. We can't stand her. I'm I sorry. To say it. I'm sorry. Now you're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> but down. no, but here's oh, why. It's not personal. But this is why. No, it's personal. It's personal. But here's why we don't like her method. Oh, go you want it. me yes. to go for it? You're on a roll. Sorry. I was just going to let you go. It just burst forth. I couldn't handle it. Well, what the <laughs> thing is, and it's not just her, but it's several others. <clears throat> they have a list that, okay, you get up in the morning and she lists like five or six things that you need to do. Her life is totally different mm. from my life yeah. or from Tara's life. And I can't do those five or six things necessarily. My life is so different. Every person is different. Every family is different. You got different ages, different amounts mm -hmm. of families. You got some that are slobs, some that are not slobs. But this, you can't have a, a specific list of mm -hmm. five or six things and expect it to work. I may not work. You may work. That list is not going to work for our. But if her lists work for you, then you then need to do, do it. it. There's a yeah. small <laughs> percentage of people that love this, and, and she's changed their lives because. And that's fine. They are the same type mm -hmm. of personality, yeah. same type of family 
yeah. you know, but orientation. But if it doesn't work for you, don't feel guilty. Don't feel, <laughs> what, what I'm saying is I don't want you to go away feeling something's wrong with you. She also, I think she said that she didn't start cleaning her house till her son was like in high school. Mm -hmm. So this shows you she's got one child. Her house was a nightmare through the growing toddler stage, the mm -hmm. baby stage, you know, all she the was running a back. Mm -hmm. It was so it's hard but she says <clears throat> you need to do this now, but she's not in that stage. I can keep my house really clean now because my kids are grown and gone. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard for me to do that and it's not hard for her to do the things yeah. she lists. So I recognize that a lot of people that have cleaning things say that. This is what you do. Follow my schedule, follow my list, and you'll have no problem with keeping your house organized. No, I was up all the night before taking care of a colicky baby. Mm -hmm. And then my toddler gets up. I go to bed at 3 and my toddler gets up at 5 o'clock. And I'm going to first thing take a shower and clean my bathtub while I'm in there. I can't even get food in my baby's mouth at that point in my life. So you've got to take all this stuff, and I try to cover a lot of different areas, and I probably don't even cover everything, but we give tips and ideas for you and to adapt. just so that you guys know, um, is this them? Yes, this is both of them. No, that's not them. Which one? Um, and because I'm just so organized. What are you looking for? <clears throat> the lists. If you guys oh. actually want lists. Here, wait a minute, let me show you. Um, <laughs> Didn't Ellie have a minimalist? They're right. Yeah. Was it this? Here they are. Okay. So in our how to get oh. organized and cleaned, we have already printed out, or you can print out your if, to do if list. If you like schedules and yeah. lists. Some of you don't, but if you Honey want Honey do lists, we have, this is mom's favorite one, and you can just shrink it and put it on two pieces you if you want. Put it in a notebook. Menus. But right here, this is the one I'm getting to. We have a daily schedule already written all out, and you can just print this out and check it off. Then we have a room-by-room room cleaning list. So this is similar to Fly Lady, but let's say you are cleaning your laundry room and you have no cobwebs. Well, don't clean the cobwebs. Don't clean it. Move to the next thing you the know, next time. They say every Monday, the first Monday of every month, you need to dust off your lamp. Well, Why? I have no dust on there. I clean when it's dirty. Yeah. And, you know, and look through the list and see, okay, is this dirty? And then clean it if it's dirty. If it is. And that's fine. But to say every Monday you have to go and dust every single thing in the house, if you live in a place where you don't have a lot of dust, you don't need to be doing no, that. No, some, so. some places I've had to dust almost every... When yeah. I was in El Paso, when we lived there, I had to get up every morning and dust mm -hmm. because there was literally a film from the dust blowing around down yeah. there, you know. And that's one thing. What, what I was saying, I hated to brag about our books, but we have stuff like this, a ton of stuff in these mm -hmm. books, and I don't think people realize how much we have packed in these books. We just, they think, well, it's just a list of how to clean, or, you know, just to tell no. you how to clean. Yeah. We have tons of things that will help you, notice how I'm organized and putting it right back where it belongs, to help you. And the first thing I started out with was you... They, I don't see people addressing this, and it's the emotional and the mental attitude towards cleaning. Mm -hmm. If you can't get this down, it's going to be almost impossible, you know, for you to actually get things going. A lot of people learn and study stuff. I mean, they study and they learn and they learn, but that's as far as it goes. Until you have that light bulb moment of, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I could do this. I can actually do this. Or why haven't I been doing this? Until you get that light bulb moment and your attitude changed and thinks, here I've been making an excuse not to do this and all that this, this is all it took. Or it didn't take me any time to do this. Why haven't I been doing this before? We try to ad address the, the attitude. Stop making excuses like Tara said. Or stop blaming. My house is too small. My house is too big. I've got... Too many well, my kids. favorite one is I went on a field trip and I kid you not, two moms had this shirt and it <laughs> said, dirty laundry, dirty dishes, dirty bathroom, happy kids. I just want to slap those women upside the head. Well, I'm like, you no, your family. Get together, people. Your family does not want to live in a pigsty. Did you see and, that? Yes. 
And <laughs> even if their rooms are big size, it doesn't mean they want to turn yeah. it Yeah, and so I'm gonna let mom, side. so the next one, Yeah. Go ahead. So, so what I did was one whole section in the cleaning book, I put personality types because you ha everybody has a different personality types. That's why fly lady different ones don't always work for everybody. And the one of the first type, I'm, I've got three types. The number one type, and I'm gonna tell you the positive side as soon as I get my glasses on and can read. The positive side is you'll wake up on this first personality type and you'll say, what will be, what will be, oh, we'll just see what happens today. I'm gonna to go with the flow. You want to, you would rather bake cupcakes with the kids and do your crafts and just leave those dirty dishes in the sink. You love dancing in the sunshine more than cleaning your bathroom. Your favorite sayings are, your children are only young once, children are with you for a while, but housework is with you forever. Or housework can wait, but your children can't. That's the type. That's the. That's kind of positive. You know, you love, you love those kids, and that is a positive thing. But the reality check of this side of personality is that you know your family is can be stressed out by this because your home is in constant chaos. You may not see it because of your personality. Your personality is so easygoing. You don't see the whole family dropping like flies from stress around you because of your personality. You're always late for stuff. You're you always late. The kids are embarrassed to bring their friends home because they have to wade through mounds of laundry and clutter to get them in the house. Now the house smells good because you baked cupcakes yesterday but they're embarrassed to bring their friends home. They love the picnic they went on yesterday, but they're frustrated because now today, you didn't do the laundry yesterday, so they can't find their clean underwear or their clean socks. They were late for school because they can't find their shoes. So there's a stressful and downside to this personality. And you know, one thing, I love this part. I love those sayings because they sound warm and fuzzy, but the fact is, my grown kids are still with me. Kids do not disappear and never go away, or I mean, unless you've got a dysfunctional family. But my kids are still, as you can tell, still with me. And now they've multiplied and I have grandkids. So I found out after growing old that they're, they're, they're gonna be with me for, they're gonna be with me forever, which means I'll never get my house clean if I have that attitude, you know, that I, you know, I'm gonna tell them, Michael. You said that comment, and I'm going to tell I got carded yesterday. Oh, no. I got carded. Oh, just because you were being smart. somebody created a monster when they told you that. I went to the thrift store, <laughs> and the senior citizens that were 55 and older got a discount. The woman wasn't going to give me the discount. She said, you're not 55 yet. Ah, ah. I, I had to break down and say I'm 66, but you know what? I thought I'm gonna rub this into Michael and Tara and they're not gonna hear the end of it. But anyway, <laughs> and you had to say that comment, see? Yes. But anyway, that's the first personality type. You have to recognize what personality type, and we talk about in here what to do when you have that personality type. You know, um, you've got to learn to give your kids a little bit more structure. You can have both, but you've got to balance it out. And I'll get into that too. And I'm not going to be able to cover everything that's in the book. I'm just giving you highlights. This will explain, you know, kids like to have a clean house. They really do. Mm -hmm. So don't think you're doing them a favor by always taking them yeah. on picnics and baking cupcakes all the time. And volunteering 50 hours a week at school. Yeah, doing all the school stuff and that type of thing. Now, so I'm skipping over a whole lot. I wish I, because I just don't have the time to cover it all. The second type of personality is on the total opposite end. You're the type that every block in your day planner, every 15 minute block in your day planner has something written in it. You've got all these lovely check marks, you know, different colors and everything. And um, your schedule is in order, your house is in order, and your life is in order. You're reliable, dependable, and always on time. Your favorite saying is a place for everything and everything in its place. And that's a positive side. You know, that's kind of nice to have that a little bit. But the reality check is you do provide structure for your children, but almost too much. Your family can't have an impromptu picnic. You know, if it's a beautiful spring day out there and they say, Let's, can we go on a picnic or can we go to the park? No, it's not written in the schedule. You will stick to that. As a matter of fact, I was talking to, um, uh, and oh, if something, something unexpected comes up and it's not in the schedule, you can be so stressed that you almost can't function. 
and I was talking to somebody just recently and this gal was wanting to make a trip a long extended trip about a 700 mile trip to visit a really good friend she hadn't seen for a while and she really wanted to go see her now the details are kind of what she did was the gal that she was going to see her mom is a scheduler and the girl the girlfriend went and said mom she um, whole, it was almost a month ahead of time they were planning this can she she <clears throat> come to visit she's wanting to come visit us and the girlfriend's all excited because her friend's going to come visit her you know drive to visit her and the mom said no it's not scheduled in basically we have plans to go to like aunt molly's house and and so she the next can't day come. was grandma and grandpa so and so yeah and, and that people that she doesn't Christmas. really know or find very well, encouraging yeah isn't it? but well and the thing is it's like aunt molly they go to aunt say they go to aunt molly's house every holiday. every yeah mm -hmm. or every other sunday or something mm -hmm. it was that type of thing that could have been adjusted and mm -hmm. canceled but no it wasn't you know it was already written down so we can't be flexible at all and that's really a it stresses the family and you know and then the, they wonder why their kids have anxiety problems yeah you and, know and the girlfriend did have <clears throat> problems with this you know so <coughs> you've got to be careful because um the kids can't feel and husbands can't feel relaxed in a home like this and they can't bring friends home either because their mom's too stressed out mm -hmm. because the kids might make a mess and so they can't deal with it um it's kind of like have you ever taken medicine for to kill uh germs in your body or like antibiotics for washing your hands to kill the germs what happens is sometimes you use so much of that you can kill the good germs mm -hmm. too. And you need those good germs. So you've got to be careful. You can't overdo on mm -hmm. any of these things. Is he tired? I think he's tired today. We Mom. have a very relaxed home at our house. <laughs> now the third type, this is the last type. You're in the middle of the road. You have plans. Bye bye, my love. Bye. You have plans. <laughs> And you make up, have like a simple planner with not every minute scheduled, but like general, I'm going to do four things today, you know, and that's your general planning. That helps. You use it, but if it's not set in stone. Um, you're, you're a little bit more lighthearted like the first lady. If the kids want to do cupcakes, well then, well, we'll do cupcakes, but I'm going to try to get the laundry done at the same time. Uh, your house is clean and neat, but there's a lot of healthy home clutter. What I mean is toys and magazines laying around, but your bathroom is not so cruddy dirty that you're afraid to step into it. You know, you just, your motto is the ho home is where your heart is, you know, type of thing. You're relaxed, but yet you try to keep in a semblance of order. The reality check for this type is um, you want to be like more like the first lady and more like the second lady. But you have to relax, and that's a good thing, too, because you're striving to improve yourself either direction or both ways. But be careful. You just don't want to pick up on the negatives of the first two ladies, you know. Mm -hmm. So the point of all this is that we all have personality types. You can't have a cleaning list, rigid cleaning list and schedule to go for just that one type, you have to figure out what your type is and then adapt those schedules and those mm -hmm. plans. And we try to teach you in here. Here it says a practical aspects of schedule making. And that that teaches you how to do, make mm -hmm. a plan and a schedule, you know, for you and that yeah. type of thing. Do we have any questions, Mike? Yes. <laughs> oh, we do. <clears throat> well, actually, Alexia is asking any ideas where you can get rid of unwanted stuff. Well, yeah, give it to the thrift store. Give it, ask neighbors. My neighbors all ask me before they get rid of stuff. I started to say, look in the yellow pages, but you maybe can't find them anymore. There's lots of thrift stores. You can do yeah. women's shelter. You can do homeless shelters. But uh, ask if they need it first. We went to the children's home here. I am not exaggerating. They had a 4,000 square foot barn of stuff that people have donated that's just dumped in there. Yeah. Because make they sure. can't process all the stuff. So make sure Call they actually them ahead of need time. it. Yeah. And like our women's <clears throat> shelter, we don't take, they don't let us take things to the women's shelter anymore. What they do is they have a store. So they take the items and then they sell the items to help get Buy money for the women's mm -hmm. store. Check with churches. They can tell you where, you know, good places to go but to. But if you cannot get rid of it, throw it away. 
Just or do you don't like grandma's going to do? Do you like grandma's going to have a free garage sale? So when I was <clears throat> when I was doing jobs when we first got married, I did some temporary jobs, and there's a person who owns a, a major tea company based in Boulder, Colorado. And he didn't want to throw anything away because he was afraid it was going to hurt the environment and all that. So instead of that, he rented this gigantic warehouse and was just filling it up with all of his stuff he couldn't get rid of. And I'm thinking it's basically trash that you're just storing until you die and someone else throws it away. Yeah. So don't, even though you might not want to keep it, I mean, even though you, you can't find a place to get rid of it, don't keep it just yeah. because nobody will take it. Yeah, you have just kinda... at the very least, put it on the corner with a free sign. Now, like least. Tara has a neighborhood, uh, what is it, a Facebook or something? Mm -hmm. And people can put stuff on there, say, I have this for mm -hmm. free and stuff. Yeah. A lot of people saying free cycle. Yeah, yeah. free cycle, next door .com. Salvation yeah. Army thrift uh, store. White Dove wants to know, how do you declutter with a teenager who loves to keep things? Well, you make them keep their stuff in their room yeah. or their portion yeah. of the room. Yeah. So, like, we have a teenager like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave them one portion of the garage for their car project, and his stuff is supposed to stay in that one portion. Now, it does eke out into my portion of the garage quite a bit. <sighs> But then she but, says you can't go to work till it's been done. Then I say, <laughs> you're not going to work in my car that's registered under my name until you get that picked up. So. Or some other motivating thing. Yeah, or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you do that. And, oh, yeah, sorry, I had some no, other things. Ahead. Well, actually, Bandana Grandma a while back made a good point. She says eBay is actually a good way to value things by the market mm -hmm. supply and demand. It's just yeah. says, but not by the listed price, what it sells mm -hmm. for. Yep. And that's totally true mm -hmm. because people Watch list for it. things that, that those are dream values yeah but like when you look at the ones that have, for seven hundred dollars <laughs> but on ebay you can sort by things that have just sold and <coughs> the ones that have sold that's that's the price that's that you can price expect you to get if yeah. you sell it on ebay now if you sell it at a garage sale you're probably not going to get that much because mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't looking for that very specific thing yeah. that although one thing on that eBay. surprised me too is i've looked at some dishes i've had that i've kept like a plate with pretty floral plate thinking that maybe it was worth maybe five ten dollars because it's like from the 1800s mm -hmm. But I'll go to an antique shop and that same plate they'll have for like a dollar, two dollars. And you can buy a new plate for a dollar or two. So these antiques really don't, aren't a lot of money a lot of times. Uh, I was so, just going to... So okay. Songbird says we don't understand the fly lady system. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, don't, no, 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 no. Don't, uh, we have studied it. We, we know the fly lady it, system. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. backwards and forwards quite a bit. And if so. it works for you, that is fine. I know. If you love it, but go for it. I know it. tons of people who keep trying to do that system and they get yeah. frustrated and they can't... See, they, we have viewers yeah. email us saying... They tried it and they were they thought something was wrong with them and we get a lot of viewers yeah. mm -hmm. doing that so it's not we're knocking fly lady I mean if that system is she has a whole market in a corner that's good that people need you know but we just didn't want people that go on there and try and think what is wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you it's the system that's not working mm -hmm. for for you know her yeah. somebody else's our system may not work for somebody. You know, that's just the way it is. We don't want you to think that you, people think they have to do it that way or there's something wrong with them. Now, see, we have, like, in there, we, did you show these? We've got, like, routine jobs, occasional jobs. I don't know if they can see that. Can they see that, Michael, or I not? Can't tell you Dave. can't tell Dave. Dave can they see it, Dave? Yep. Huh? Yeah, it's got routine jobs, like laundry <coughs> dishes, vacuuming, grooming, um, making beds so we list that then we have occasional jobs like um wash Washing the curtains, curtains wash windows. the windows those things then we have another list here of uh like your daily list get dressed make bed those types of things and we also have like a weekly list on monday so we have like what fly lady does on some mm -hmm. things we're giving you not just one locked in system. We're trying to give you other, here's, this is close, you know, Monday you can dust the furniture, vacuum, shake out the rugs. So we do have kind of, you know, lists like that, but we give other types of lists too. For example, well here's a monthly list of stuff to do each month, like dust the baseboards or clean the closets type thing. We've got seasonal lists like change the furnace filter, uh, all this is in the book, just tons of pages. Now, here's what I was looking for. Should we show we the even, 
We even do a list for people who have different types of things in their schedule book. For example, we got uh, the simple version, and you can list this in your schedule, your day planner, whatever you want, that says get dressed. But some people can't just do, they need more details. So we've got a detailed version, which instead of saying get dressed, it says wash your, uh, get dressed, we mean that people know I need to get dressed, comb my hair, wash my face, and do that. People automatically do that. So they don't need a detailed version, but some people do need a detailed version. So under the detailed version, we have wash face, brush teeth, comb hair, do makeup, and like that. Or with the kids, the simple one is kids. In other words, have your kids, kids ready. Yeah, have the kids comb their hair, brush their teeth, and that. But we also have the detailed version for the kids, like wash their face, you know, and, and so on. And we've got a lot of different, the kitchen, you know, clean uh, the kitchen, and then we have the detail. So you haven't, a couple of people have said you haven't said what book you're talking about for a very long time. Oh. oh so ahead. we're talking about our um, How to Get Organized and Clean Your House ebook series. And it's 50% right now, on sale, 50% off. Michael put the link in there for you. Did so, I read? Yeah. Because we do have a lot of other books besides dining, you know, that we go mm -hmm. into really, the same yeah. way we do cooking details, you know, how we list how to cook rice, how, what do you have in your freezer. We do all those things in dining. We do other details in our cleaning books, you know, yeah. they have a lot of details. Um, all right, so where are we at on questions, Mike? <clears throat> Um, let's see. Victoria says not only does it take up space in your house, but also takes up space in your mind and causes mm -hmm. stress. I have found that even if you yeah. don't really pay attention to it, it still causes stress. The fact that in the back of your mind somewhere, you know it's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not having to deal with it every day, Chloe wants to know how do you get an adult child who moved back home to clean? I think she's talking about like an older adult child. I'd say clean or get out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. Yeah. That's and what... I would, I mean, and if they're being rebellious, you have another whole issue. Well, but we and are... that, you know, why don't we cover that when we get to the husbands and the... Yeah, we don't have time today. We're totally out of time. Oh, are we out of time? Okay. <laughs> so we'll probably get to the husbands and that on... A lot of people Wednesday. ask, how do I get my husbands Friday. to do things, yeah. my kids to do stuff, which would fall under... There's a couple of different ways to go with that. If they're just being completely rebellious, that is a you need to kick them out yeah. situation. If they're just being lazy, then you need to explain to them, I am helping you out by letting you stay at home. Mm -hmm. You need to help out. You're an adult. You can help with the work. Ask them to do the work. Sometimes you don't you even ask. ask. That's them. what I would encourage. Yeah, so. they, you think you think they know <coughs> to do it, but sometimes mm -hmm. they don't know you even want them to do yeah. it. You know. So there are a lot of people asking about Ellie's minimalist video, and I'm sharing it. I've shared it a couple times in the comments, and I'm sharing it again. And when mm -hmm. we're done, I'll make sure it stays in the description on YouTube. Yeah. But she decided to get rid of virtually everything she owned and did a video about it, and we yeah. were we were slightly shocked at how much she got rid of. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other questions before we open mail? Uh, oh, we're opening mail. Sure. Uh, we did. Let's see. White Dove was asking, are there any things you find hard to let go of and what spurs <coughs> you on to let go of? Who, me? Us. I think just any of us. Well, I guess what, what the light bulb went off for me was about when we were, when I was moving to Idaho, I was going through some of my stuff that I'd say. <coughs> I had a little scrapbook that I had when I was like five, or five. 10 or 11 somewhere around there and I was looking through the scrapbook and it had tickets of things I went to it had smash flowers I didn't have a clue of what these were for I could not even remember anything about it I didn't have in there what they were for I couldn't remember any of the people I didn't remember any of it I thought I have hauled this silly book around let, and I don't even know what it was, let alone my kids would want I saved it because I thought the kids would want it. Why would they want something I can't even remember, just my old ticket stubs, mm -hmm. to something they'd never been to, that they weren't... It didn't even say if it was a play or what it was. It was just mm -hmm. ticket stubs. And I thought, this is ridiculous that I've saved this stuff for years, you know? And so anything like that, I... I just started getting rid of. I'll ask the kids if they want it. They just look at me and roll their eyes. Then I just get rid of it, you know? It's crazy. So that's what happened with me. I, I got tired of moving it, and I haven't missed it. That was when we moved to Idaho, was what, 25 years ago? I 
the only time I happen to remember it is because I tell you guys about it, but otherwise I wouldn't have even missed it at all. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Well, I just, I was thinking on the same thing. <clears throat> uh, one time I asked, I, I had some something and I was talking to the kids about it and I said, are you going to want this if, you know, I die? And BJ was like, eh. <laughs> I thought, why am I saving it? I don't like it. I saved it because I thought they would want it. Mm. And I can't remember what it was, some some family thing, uh, but it wasn't really a super important mm. family thing. Mm -hmm. Me, I go through cycles. So for me, it's more project type stuff. So like if I know I'm working on a project or I have a project in mind, I will collect things for that project. So like when we first moved here, I knew that I wanted some containers for container gardening. So I collected all the neighbor's tree trees. for David that... David, what he David's always moved tar for years and years, oh, and one of yeah. the moves he went out into her yard and he says, "Do you want this?" And she said, "Yeah." And he picked it up and it was a metal container. There was no bottom to it, and he's looking at you. Want this? You know? Yeah, I was thinking but, the same thing. <laughs> but they think that. But I actually use. She those did things. use them. So. And so what I do is I'll collect things, and then if I don't end up using them for that project or whatever, I will dump. I mean, I'm pretty yeah, good about does, it. When, she does. when I know that I'm done with it, then I get rid of it. But it does, sometimes it'll take me a couple of years, like the whole garden thing. When we first moved here, I wasn't sure what I was using, what I wasn't using. I had ideas, then they didn't work, and that kind of thing. And so for me, it's just getting through that final project. And then when I'm done, it's out of here. Get rid of I'm, the emotion involved yeah. with the stuff. I have no that's, emotion. That's with the any bottom of it. line. Get rid of the emotion. The emotion is not the the thing is not the person. Mm -hmm. The thing is not what you want to do. That stuff is not going to love you. You know. It's it helps not gonna... that I'm not an emotional person really anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of like say yeah. Well, I kind of but... learned because I kept a lot of things. Some uh, a couple of people are talking about sentimental things, and that's the stuff that I have always held on to the most. But like memories, I had the same thing. I had probably fifty blue ribbons from things so i was thinking what are these even for mm -hmm. and i knew some of them were from track and field day in eighth grade and i was thinking i don't care my kids don't care and then there were things we but to michael if you really keep can one you, trophy keep one or two keep 20 don't trophies. keep yeah i don't right. even remember if i still have my trophies i kept them for a while and i got rid of some because the ones i got rid of i thought well, that was a bad year, and I wasn't any good that year anyway. Well, but I'm like, not even sure I kept the last one because the kids didn't want them. And I was yeah. thinking, if they don't want them, the grandkids really like. If Grandma want them. So and So had a collect an apron collection of 25 aprons, pick the one apron you remember her being in and get rid of the rest. If you really want to keep the aprons, make a quilt out of them that you can actually use. Mm -hmm. Send them to someone to make a quilt out of them. If they mean that much to you then pay to have someone make it for you if it if it means that much to you or learn how to make a but quilt. But it's like I said, it, but grandma or your mom is going to feel really bad that you're clinging to this stuff yeah. and stressing yourself stressing over. Stressing yourself out. It's well, not were, worth it. But also, Tara and I went through this uh, one or two years ago. <clears throat> uh, school memorabilia. The thing is, I think we realized from high school, neither one of us really liked high school. And we had some friends then, but we moved away from where we were. And after discovering Facebook, I realized we're, it was, they had a great place in my life when they were there. But <coughs> we're never going to be able to have a friendship mm -hmm. like that again. We dumped and every yearbook. We got, so we got rid of... Everyone. I wrote for the school yearbook. So I cut out like two or three of the articles that were the most meaningful to me. Like I got to meet somebody from Star Trek and interview them. And I thought mm -hmm. that was cool. So... I, I cut out a few things and we threw away our yearbooks. Well, ever since then, it's been two years, I think, I haven't even looked at the couple things that I cut out of the yearbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was something else about that. I, I just think you have to realize with some of those memorabilia items that if a time in your life has passed and you're not going to get it back and it's not that really that meaningful to you, it's never going to be meaningful to anyone else. No. 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 Any and other questions? One other thing... Um, <laughs> Tina says, if you have something you think your kids might want, give it to them now. Oh, yeah. And if not, Definitely. then if they and don't want it, then throw it give away. Give it to them with the stipulation. If you don't, you don't want like this, it, get, get rid, rid of, of it. it. These parents who lay guilt trips on kids, you are wrong for doing that. You are wrong for placing... Don't give it to them and tell them they have to keep it. You are yeah. a clutter problem yeah. on your kids. That mm. is just flat out wrong. Yeah. And um, give it to them with a stipulation. If this means something to you and you want to keep it, keep it. If you don't, 
you know, then don't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there were various other questions, but I think we so we've answered most of them. We yeah. might we might read over some of them too. Oh, and actually, <laughs> Amanda did say my mother was a hoarder, and let me tell you, it was not fun at all after <laughs> she passed away, and I had to deal with it. it. Helped me a lot learning as far as not keeping useless junk myself. And I had two grandmothers who had massive <laughs> amount of stuff when they died, and it was the same thing. I think you know, pick it. Do your kids and grandkids a favor and well, make their life easier. It's funny because after observing that, I told Tara, I would like to, I don't, it's a pretty hard goal, but I would like to, when I die, have like one suitcase full of things that are not the whole family's things, that are just my things. And the kids can open it and say, uh, I'll take that and we'll throw the rest away. But, you know, instead of three warehouses full of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So. Believe me, we know hoarding. My grandfather had seven one-acre plots in the city he lived in, not including acreage out on the farmland, and he hoarded. And it's it it's not okay, guys. It, it is not okay. It was okay. serious hoarding, like the type you see on TV and that they show on the shows. It, was it just very shows bad. complete and total disrespect and love for your family. And it really does. It's kind of sad because. There is an emotional problem going on when you hoard like that. The stuff is feeding your emotions. Or even if you're not that you're... bad, if you're still, your house is just messed up, cluttered all the time. You know, it's different. We have and 1,400 you... square feet of our living area up in our house for seven people. was seven people, six now. So our house is always cluttered. But in 30 minutes, I can have it picked yeah. up ready for company for Christmas in 30 minutes. And so it's a constant battle, keeping it flowing. Okay, get this down to your room, keep it down to your room. But you have to keep you have doing to keep on that. Top of you it. can't just and say, you know. I was gonna say too, you were talking about, um, uh, oh, for rainy day, I was, made me think of rainy day. You know, you save all this stuff for rainy day, or he, he kind of, you know, saved things a lot, your grandpa did. Mm -hmm. For rainy day, you're worried that you're gonna need it. You've got to trust God a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, keep a reasonable amount and be frugal and be careful with what you have. But there's a point where you have to say, okay, now I've got to just trust mm -hmm. God. He, God doesn't want me stressing over this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. having too much of this stuff. You've just got to let go of it sometimes. And so. it doesn't mean that you don't prepare at all. No, there's, but it's, it's once again, it's the extremes. <clears throat> It's yeah. just the extremes. Keep a balance we in everything. Keep things, we keep things that we don't get rid of, like a couple of pairs of eyeglasses from each mm -hmm. other in case. Because if something kind of catastrophic happens, we can recreate a lot of our lives. But things like glasses, if we couldn't get them, they're customized to us. Yeah. One quick thing, too. People keep saying, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? Okay. You've got to just start. You keep saying, I don't know where to start. The thing is, that's just an excuse Stop not to excuses. start. Yeah. And you go walk over, <coughs> Tara's got a drawer right there that she keeps her pens and pencils, and you walk over to that drawer and you start. You dump all the pens you out, walk, pick the ones you want, put the ones you and want do to keep, it. dump the rest. You walk into your closet, pick one shelf, you just do it. The saying, I don't know where to start, mm -hmm. is just one more thing to say, I'm not going to do it. I don't know how to do it. You know, Jack was like two or three years old. He spilled his <clears throat> Cheerios on the floor. He knew to go into the cabinet, get the little dust broom and pan, and started cleaning up. I have a lot of people say, I don't know where to start or how, or how to clean. Mm -hmm. he, the three-year-old knew how to take a dust pan and a broom and do it. You Surely you as it. an adult, mm -hmm. you can. And you just stand mm -hmm. up and you start. It's not a matter where do I start. It's a matter of... I'm using that as an excuse. And stop wasting time. So like when you're boiling yes. the water for your tea, instead of getting yeah. on your phone, dinking on Facebook, you clean out the One tea drawer. drawer. The next time you're waiting for that pan of water to boil for the noodles in the kitchen, you clean out your silverware drawer. And it literally takes that long. I have timed really myself. Does. I yeah. have done it a really drawer does. or a shelf on a cabinet in three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. You said something, and I was going to say something about it because I thought it was really, I can't remember, but somebody else said something that reminded me, though. I used to collect books and movies, and I realized one day when I had probably three shelf units for books and movies, 
I've only read half of these, and I've only read all, the ones that I have read. I've read only read ninety five percent of them one time. Mm -hmm. Why am I keeping it? Yeah. So yeah. I donated them all thinking I can go to the library and get it if I ever want to read it. And really, I haven't. Yeah. Mom and I have a collection of books like Grace Livingston Hill that we actually keep the physical books because if the zombie apocalypse happens, we will have something to entertain ourselves. But we don't have ton. I mean, actually, people say Mike and I have a ton of books, but I actually use them. They're my reference books. They're my how to garden books. And those Bible um, study type books that we like, those kinds of things that we use over and over, we keep. But we don't just buy books and keep I think them. I've bought maybe four <clears throat> books in my whole life, but I read three to four books a week. Yeah. I'm an avid reader, we but I've only bought free. like three to four books over my yeah. lifetime. I don't buy many. Yeah. So, okay. So we are going to continue this on what are, I don't even know what day is today. What is today? Friday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday. We're going to continue this on Friday. Um, and we'll probably talk about husbands and kids on Friday. Uh oh. <clears throat> and yeah. Get rid of your husbands and kids. <laughs> get rid of your husbands oh, and kids. Oh, this is going to be fun. Yes. This is from Patty. This is for the Kellum clan. So, for those of you who aren't familiar Dave, with this, this is for Uncle we're Dave. stopping that topic for the moment, and we're just getting into chit-chat mode, looking at <coughs> cards that we got for Christmas nice. and stuff. So. Yeah, because we got a whole bunch of cards and stuff from you guys. I got a whole we'll, box we'll here. We'll do some more. Oh, cute, cute <coughs> card, cute card. Can they see it, Dave, when I hold it up? Oh, that is really cute. Isn't that cute? It looks like, it looks like Chumley. Yeah. Dave, look it. <laughs> This one's from Patty, cat lover. Thank you, cat lover. I'll read it oh, later. You, yeah, you oh, guys write the nicest Sorry. things, and I go over them. I even have for my birthday all the ones. Sorry, I just remembered. Thank you, Patty. Oh, sorry. The, the one thing I was going to say about cleaning that you were still talking about, and Laura's thing reminded me of it. She says, I need help throwing things away, and it's still like going through stuff. I have found, I used to take a whole bunch of stuff and say, um, I don't think I want this one. I don't think I want that one. And I finally realized it's better to take a whole bunch of stuff and pick out the things that immediately grab your attention and have good meaning mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. I did that with mm -hmm. photo albums because I had photo albums with thousands of pictures that I didn't ever look at. And they weren't family. They were just like, I went on a trip to Europe in 1986 and stuff like that. And I picked out the pictures that had meaning to me. That when I looked at it, it made me feel some certain way. And the ones that made me feel nothing... They're gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And start with, like, in your house, start with the trash. We all know what trash oh, is. Oh, if you just get rid of the trash just alone, you'd be shocked. get rid of the trash. Yeah. Or Seriously. stuff you don't ever, ever use. Yeah. Like, like this morning, the boys and I were cleaning up from the kitchen, from Christmas. Well, I mean, we cleaned up some yesterday, but we were finishing cleaning up today. And I was like, get every single piece of trash off the floor and everywhere you see trash, get the trash first. I always, always, always start with the trash. Trash and dirty clothes. Because so, sometimes and dirty clothes, people yeah. mm -hmm. take their clothes off oh, in the living room. Oh, those are the room easiest and, things. Yeah, yeah totally you, know, you know what there. to do with them. So we've just told you where dirty to start. Dirty dishes. Trash, clothes, dirty, dirty dishes. dishes. You know those three. You know where they go. Mm -hmm. Get them put you up. You don't have to think washed. about them. Yeah. And it'll give you room to look at this. Wow. Thank nice. you, Patty. You know what's so funny? I've been watching these yarn shows on mm -hmm. YouTube, and they have project bags. And I'm thinking, those are so yeah. cool. And they have, you can put like your crochet hooks mm -hmm. or different things in here, you know. And this will be so nice. Put a link to your YouTube Thank you. um, channel, Patty, because um, she has some really cool stuff on there. This is really <coughs> nice. Thank you. This one's from Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Merry Christmas Ooh. late. Yay. <coughs> Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, so we've got, I don't know who this one is to. This one's just to Living on a Dime. So you want to open that one? Can you open it? Okay. This Ooh. one is from Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, that's wow. Oh, how cute. Oh, that's a cool card. That's a keeper card. Oh, thank that's you. That's pretty. Margaret, our Margaret has sent us more mail than anyone, and we love Do getting it all the time. Crush what? This is from Cheryl. From Cheryl. Hey, Nana, Grandma says we both held up the same card. I wonder which one. Um, from Patty, from Cat Lover. She sent one to us and one to Mom. <laughs> Oops. Oh, was that from Cat Lover? Yeah. Oh. Oh, this Cat Lover. Cheryl. Thank you. Oh my, we got a card from Finland. <gasps> Look at Whoa, that! Cool. Hmm? 
Oh, thank you, cat lover. I really will use that bag because I've been knitting and crocheting and I've been wanting one. So that, and I love those colors on that bag. And now she's opening up one from, from Cheryl. Cheryl. This is from Cheryl. Oh, look at this Ooh, box. That's cute. How cute is that? Mm -hmm. I think you just pulled the top off. Oh. oh. <clears throat> Watch your show all the time. Mm -hmm. Saw this and had to send it to you. Merry Christmas. Blessings yeah, from Cheryl. Cheryl. Get to have Christmas again. <laughs> oh. I'm afraid to break it. Oh, oh, oh that's oh how cute. Oh. <laughs> Roman <laughs> with the gnomies. I think that one's that's mine. Cute. You think that one's yours? Hmm, oh my see. goodness. You know. Thank you. Oh, that is so I have not cute. ever seen that one. I have not either. Oh, man, That's that is cute. cute. Okay, so we have, is it Mar Mar Marina? Marina from Finland. She says she's Italian and lives in Finland and just started watching our show. Loves it. Oh, Yay. Thank you. A very happy Christmas. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that is That's so nice. Awesome. That's okay, nice. Let's see. What else do we have here? So this one is from Tracy. Tracy is my faithful acne soap buyer person. She <laughs> buys out you want to open it? Soap. It's tagging onto your thing. Butterfly said trash, clothes, and also dirty dishes. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Dime family. <coughs> nice oh, until proven nice. naughty. Uh -oh. <laughs> nice. oh, that's cute. cute. Oh, look at these stickers, guys. Oh, oh thank you, Tracy. Oh, thank oh, you. Nice. Oh. Isn't that cool? Thank is it, you. Is, is it Tracy from the UK? Oh, yeah. No, not, not this Tracy. Oh, okay. oh yum. Tracy. David's. <gasps> oh, Jack Dave loves these. those. Jack loves them. Yeah. And BJ loves them. Give me a oh. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Okay, mm. if Joanne and Denise are on there. This is for me. I would share. No, it's not. Is your name on there? Your name is not on there. It's living on a dime. That's fine. <gasps> oh, yum. yum. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Chocolates for Nan, right? Jack will agree. It's chocolates. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. What? Yeah, you can have a little bit. Okay, and this is for Tara. Hmm, who's it from? Yes, she may. Either one. Um, from Melody. Melody. She watches us and loves us. Oh, thank oh. you. Oh, <laughs> did she make that? I bet she did. That is cute. Oh my goodness, I Melody. Thank she you did. so that is much. Really cute. Oh, oh that is adorable. That is just adorable. Oh my okay, goodness. I'm gonna put this all together so I don't lose. Oh, thank you. Okay, yep. here's one more. Who's this from? Ashley. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Here, you want to open this? This is to know what's for dinner. I have no idea. This is from Susie. Taco Bell. Susie <laughs> leftovers. Ooh, oh, look at that. It's so... You guys see it? Isn't that pretty? Oh my, this was really wrapped. How you feeling, Jack? Everybody said you're looking pale. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it's got glitter on it. Susie said, sorry about the glitter. I hate it too. <laughs> that's cute. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, that oh, is my. beautiful. Isn't that wow. pretty? Oh, oh my. my. Well, that's really cool. Oh, that's perfect for now. Who's that from? Um, Ash, Ashley. Ashley, Ashley. Ooh, that's really cool. Foxy Fix in Idaho. Oh, Oops. she's in Idaho. We love oh, Idaho. We love Idaho. We lived in Idaho. Maybe well, look at that pen. Idaho. It's got little You know, that was not too hard to persuade me. The pen oh, has from little, April. April? It has a little crystal A custom in planner it. to help you. <laughs> Twentieth anniversary Perfect. of your cookbook. Wow! Oh my! I was just thinking today. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh my! Oh, she my even goodness. printed custom pages with dining on a dime. Oh my goodness! How oh, cute! Look at that! Wow! Oh wow! That's true. Should have on you each day guys. what to do to get the twentieth one out. Oh my goodness! Wow! Oh look at that! Recipes. Oh, oh. I love these markers. Wow! Aren't thank those cute? you. That is really the queen. Is that a is that a crown? Yes, the queen. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, and look, oh, she's got even. Little, oh yeah. 
See, look little at the markers. little markers. Oh my goodness, oh those are my cute. Flower, perfect wow. for you. Oh, oh, all my stickers to wow. go with it. Can you see? You see his Wow. <laughs> oh, look at them. How cute. Forks and spoons and knives. Oh my goodness. Look at the cute. baking ones. Wow. Oh, thank uh, you so much. Oh Jennifer my says it's a good thing you decluttered now that you have all those new things. I know. <laughs> okay, so go check out www.foxyfix.com. Ooh. Made yeah. in Hayden, Idaho. Well, thank you. Well, I know where Hayden Man, is. I know. We I know where too. Hayden is in Idaho. Matter of fact, we had someone have a house for sale there that we were trying mm -hmm. to decide. Wow. We know where that <clears throat> is. Oops. Okay, there. Got that. And then the last card. Did you do the last, the other one? I think this is the last one. No, there was one from Bandana somewhere. Yeah, I already opened it. That oh, you opened the, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Happy, oh, from Coco Noel. Hello, Colleen. <laughs> they found our cookbook in Michigan. Oh, look, she's got a made, handmade yeah. box. And look, she even has her oh, own stamp. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that cool? See, it says handmade by that her. That is so cute. That Look at that really holly cool. on there. How cute is that? Oh, thank you guys. Wow, you guys are so man. talented. My goodness. That oh, is man, neat. Oh, man. Are you getting sick? Um, Who's yeah. that from? I, well, I think Coco that Noel. Be getting sick. The planner, I mean? <laughs> the planner was from April. Oh, oh sorry. is that April? Is that April? Oh, yes. She said, you, she said, LOL, planners are my jam. I love sharing the planning bug. <laughs> Very nice. See, now I need April sitting here to use the planner for me. Yeah. And I just yeah. spew out the ideas. What do you want? And uh, then she, that's, see, that's my problem. I need someone to work Tara with her. needs a, she needs a, a garrison of personal assistance. <laughs> because. Instead of you and me, right, Michael? Well, the, the problem is you and me are a good start, but she needs like a thousand people, not two more. people. Because she's, she, well, seriously, she does come up with some good ideas. It's just that we can't handle them all. She can't implement the ideas that she comes up with. So it takes a lot of us. We love you anyway, Dr. I say that in the most amazing way. Thanks. So. I'm reading a book on how to delegate now. Dave is the new shipping man. Yep. Very sadly. Do you guys, wish she hadn't read the book, Dave? I do not want to do this. <laughs> but he is being paid. To do the shipping, well, yes, yeah. and much. and the payment is compensation for a job that he doesn't get to decline. <laughs> Ouch! But you know, when he gets to go buy little mm -hmm. doodads and things that he likes, or the mm -hmm. computer that he wants to do his video business mm -hmm. with, then Which he'll be happy. Why I'm making like zero yeah. videos right now. He's happy for the cash. Okay, come over here. So Jack wants to show you he got a pirate ship from Santa for Christmas. So show him what you made. So, he built this. Yeah, I had to. So it, it came in pieces. Yeah, in pieces with <clears throat> um with uh, with like nails, nails. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I made a pirate ship ship. Mm -hmm. He hammered the nails in and everything. You got That's it all, awesome. didn't you? Yep. Okay, so, you know, why not? Here we go. Oops, one got smushed. That's okay. Oh, my, oh my, do they say what they right are? Right here, right here. Where? Right here on the side. Oh, caramel, strawberry cream, oh chocolate goodness. truffle, chocolate caramel. Oh, oh I love caramel. Oh. I love caramel. Oh. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Chocolate I'm, doesn't last very long around here. I'm sorry, guys. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Yum. If oh you're my. ever wondering, just send chocolate or gnomes. Mm. Notice I put the whole thing. That's piggish. I put the whole thing mm. in my mouth. Denise says, the Joanne, she's in the chocolate without us. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to be overwhelmed with guilt now. I but I'm, I'm, notice I'm still eating it. Carol I'm still says eating it. maybe a voice recorder would help. You know what's funny about a voice recorder is... I'd lose it. We went huh. to a conference a few years ago, and we found mm. out that if you talk mm. to a voice recorder, there are some places mm. that you can send your, your recording, and for like a dollar a page, they transcribe, they transcribe it. it for you. Well, the thing is, you can get a lot of stuff in a page. <laughs> So mm -hmm. that's a lot easier than writing it yourself. Mm. No, my problem is I make really lists, but then I lose them. So it doesn't do me any good to make the list because then I lose the list. So 
I've I have worked come to years. determine I've that I am never going to be organized. So you go with the flow. I just keep trying. Well, you, this you've giant cabinet better. over here is where I keep all my lists. <laughs> <laughs> like for Christmas, for everything. <laughs> I made five. This is my last trip to Walmart. Trips to Walmart after Christmas. So after I'd made my last trip to Walmart for Christmas, I went five more times because I kept losing my How list. many times do you have Mike go to then in between all well, of those? Well, that includes Mike's. Oh. But... <laughs> but I kept losing the list, and I was like, oh, we don't have any cherry jello. I forgot the cherry. And then nobody ate the cherry jello. I know. Did I not? No. Not on Christmas. Which one is the so, cherry? The red jello salad. Oh, I ate it after Christmas. I know. I didn't know it was so, there. There was just so much to plow through. <laughs> so, yeah, so I made five trips, and yeah. But that's cute. That's okay. Um. So are we going to do this Friday then? Continue it or what? So we'll continue on Friday because we never talked about how to get your husband and your slack of kids okay. to clean up. So Hey, okay. you don't have trouble with your husband cleaning up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you whatever. You know better than that. <laughs> um, Janice said, just got back from buying my chocolate candy for next Christmas. Ah. This is the best time if you okay, can find I'm it sorry. at the markdowns. I'm really mm -hmm. sorry. I hate to do this to you guys, but I just can't. Go ahead, show them your Lego. I'm so hungry. Eat the whole thing. Yeah, I forgot to plan dinner, so mm. we still have leftovers, though. So for Christmas, I got these Legos. I can stick on the wall or roof. <laughs> <laughs> He's been having fun sticking them all over the place. Huh? <laughs> Mom's new decorations for her walls. <laughs> oh. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll be on Friday doing your slacker husband and your slacker kids. But you wouldn't know what that, well, the first part is like. We've got another category for you, Michael. We'll fit you in another category. Mike is the master of cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> and how to let your husband clean even when he doesn't do it right. <laughs> but the problem that Tara has is Mike is a master of cleaning, but then he puts things where... He stuffs it. He just stuffs Some it in place. the cabinets no, and I, doesn't put I it where put it belongs. It, I put it where it seems logical. I put it where it was where before Tara... Where he thinks Tara, it's logical. I put it where we used to keep it before Tara reorganized last week. <laughs> I, I moved... <laughs> it takes me I about... I moved the pans. It takes me After about... After five years, I moved the pans to the cabinet over because for the show, I have a problem. It because we me... don't have a studio and I'm trying to do all this. In my kitchen while I'm cooking dinner. It takes me a few months if something major gets moved to figure out where it's supposed to be now. So I keep putting it in the old place. Although the pans, I have learned, and it's only been, what, three weeks. I was doing it right today. Actually. <coughs> but so you have to be careful because when your same. husband cleans and does awesome <coughs> stuff like that, but doesn't quite get everything exactly where you want it. You could discourage him if you tell him I too got, much. I, might I, not got clean that. Just, just, I got it written right here. I'm going to deal with that on go. Friday, Michael. Right. I do. I have it written down. I'm going to deal and with it. And then Friday. I go put it back where it belongs later. If he cleans your walk and you complain about it, you never do another dish again. I've, I've got a whole <laughs> that wasn't page you, on though. that, Michael, for Friday. So Mike's <laughs> mom had this nasty looking walk, and one day he got the brilliant idea to clean it for her. I was a teenager. I was like 17. Can you imagine a teenager actually picking up something to clean a dish? And she just ended up screaming at him. She yelled at, at me and I had never cleaned another dish the whole time I lived with her. Because he took off the seasoning and he didn't know it was seasoning. He thought it was nasty grossness stuff. I mean, But, but to his credit, he does clean. He and does. I even cleaned houses yeah. together for a while. And he did oh, a really nasty house. Mike oh, is really good houses. at cleaning. And so I have yeah. no complaint with that except that he puts things where they don't belong. Where you can't find I just again. move it back. <coughs> <laughs> and he's almost, after 23 years, almost, not quite, but almost, left the salt on the well, stove. We do <laughs> disagree. We do disagree between us because Tara likes to have things on the counter that she uses a lot. But for because me, because I don't have the strength to keep reaching up and opening stuff. But for me, it seems too many things on the counter I find stressful. So if she's not here for a month, I'll put it away, which is what I did when she was in. <laughs> on her road trip with Ellie. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Sometimes there's no way for it, though. So now we're scheduling our counseling appointment. <laughs> so we will Let's be see, married on Friday. Thursday. I got Thursday from 3 to 4 open. <laughs> 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 for Michael. 
from five to six for you. <laughs> Michael, when they first were married, he come trot. I lived across the street from him. He come trotting over there. Oh, I don't know what to do. She did this or she did that or I. I what should? What am I supposed to do when they were newlyweds? Kind of. It was so funny. <laughs> I'm going to go eat more peppermint now. Oh, Angela says you should put the list on your phone. Ha! <laughs> she work, can't find her phone! She most, loses her phone! It works for most people, but she... Okay, she, get my phone. She never can find the phone. Oh, here's my phone. And okay, see? She couldn't even point where it was. Phone. I, got her a, phone. I got her a thing for Christmas that you use from your phone to find your keys. And I was like, but she can't find, find the phone! phone. Okay, find the keys. Call, to find call the keys. my phone. You guys got to hear Is my voicemail. Uh... I set up the voicemail for her so people Mike's would understand. Up. Oops, except it's not in Gmail. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I have my phone. Here's Mike doing the old man looking over his This is what phone. I was talking about, to adapt the scheduling and cleaning okay. and stuff to Here. your... Okay, you got it on speaker so they can hear it? No. Oh. And then I'll just decline it, right? You're not ringing. It says it's ringing. Hmm. Why isn't my phone ringing? Is the battery charged? Oh, here it goes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I, if I decline microphone. it, right? Okay. Oops. Okay, go ahead. Hi, this is Charles' phone. She's not able to take your call at the moment, but please leave your name and telephone number, and she'll call you back as soon as she finds the phone and charge the battery. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so did you guys hear that? Okay, so in case they didn't hear it, tell them what you said. I said, hi, this is Tara's phone. Uh, please leave a message and she'll call you back as soon as she finds the phone and recharges the batteries. She never uses this phone. <laughs> it's like always packed away somewhere. And it, it's most useful as a music player. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, now that we're priceless, that's why we love you all. <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, that's hilarious. See, I need a personal assistant just to walk around with me all the time, and then I'll be good. <laughs> I love that message. <laughs> Green pastures says, I greener pastures, I keep my phone in my apron. Yeah. I keep mine in my pocket, well, but I never have it turned off, so I never well, know when I get messages. I don't look. It's funny because a lot of times people, when they have to get to <clears throat> important, it's an important call they need to get a hold of Tara, and they're like, can't I have her cell phone number? It's like, really? She never has the cell phone. <laughs> if you have that number, it's like calling into the black hole. <laughs> so, like, so I always say, here's the house number. Call the house number. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. That's why we still have a house number. Right? <laughs> all right. Oh. Okay, guys. We'll be back on Friday. Bye. With all the fun. Bye. Bye, Thanks, bye everybody. Later. Have a good week. <laughs>